Hello everyone, welcome back to YouTube channel of DCC and ATI Gatala. And today we are going to discuss problem Jellyfish and Game. So if you haven't read the question, I will explain you it once. So there are two characters, Jellyfish and Gellyfish. And Jellyfish has N apples. And values of apples are A1, A2, A3 and AN. And Gellyfish has M apples and their values are B1, B2, B3 and BM. And they both will play a game of K rounds. So like round 1 will happen, then round 2 and then round K. So uh, I will just explain you the game while showing you this example. And at the end what you have to do is, uh, at the end, after K rounds, you have to output the sum of values of J. And you will play this game in such a way that you would want to maximize your sum. So how this game will happen? So I'll show you. In round 1, uh, Jellyfish will start the game. So in round 1, Jellyfish wants to maximize his value. So he will just exchange its minimum element with G's maximum element. So yeah, in round 1, uh, J will have G's 9 and J will give its 1 to G. So here you can see. And I kept it sorted so you can understand it better. So and what will happen in round 2? In round 2, Jellyfish will think, Jellyfish will do the same thing with Jellyfish. What will Jellyfish do is, uh, it will take its minimum value and swap it, it swap it up with uh, jellyfish maximum value. So you can see zero is uh, gone here and nine is here. And what will happen in down three? Again, jellyfish J will try to maximize its value. So it will give its minimum value to G, and will it will take its maximum value which is nine. So one four five nine and zero one one eight nine. So you see, uh, here the k can be up to 10 to the power 9 so and you can observe here for k is equal to 1 sum of values of j will be same th as that for k is equal to 3 and this pattern will repeat so does this really does it, does it really make sense to calculate for k is equal to 11037 for this much big value or for 10 to the power 9 you can just do this operation for 20 to 30 times and you will get the answer so that's pretty much the intuition and now I will show you the implementation part by showing you the code. So yeah, uh, I took the values of N, M and K here and J will store the values of uh, jellyfish apple and G will store the values of jellyfish apple. And I stored all of them in a multi set because I want to erase and I want to insert some elements uh, because I want to erase the minimum and insert the maximum element for the other. That's why I st stored all of them in multi set. Also, I want it to be sorted, so that's why. So, uh, yeah, I just iterated it for 50 times to be on safer side. You can also do it in 20 to 30 times. So, yeah. Uh, so, what this variable means is uh, this sum will basically store my sum of values of jellyfish uh, at the end, which I have to output. And this vector is nothing but it will store all the values of sum from 1 is equal to uh, i is equal to 0 to 50. And yeah, so G end will store the maximum value of G. You can see here a maximum value of G, G end will store, and J end will store the maximum value of J, and J first will store the minimum value of J, and G first will store the minimum value of G. And these four things is all I needed. Uh, and you can see when I percent two is equal to zero, that means when first operation is done, it started from zero, right? So when first operation is done and when my G end will be greater than my J first, that means my J, J first is minimum, J first is smaller than G end. Uh, that means it makes sense to swap them up. So what Jellyfish will do is just uh, erase its zero and add nine. So I did the same thing, erase the zero and then add insert nine into that. Also Jellyfish, Jellyfish will do what Gellyfish will do is erase its 9 and add 0. So this is basically the swapping thing. And Gellyfish will do the same thing when its turn will come. So yeah, they, uh, this part is basically that much only. And after the round is finished, what you have to do is uh, calculate the sum of all values of Gellyfish. So I just uh, stored it in sum. You can see here, uh, I iterated all JJ and stored it in sum. And then I just push back the entire value of sum in V1. Uh, so yeah, at the end you just have to print the value of sum. 
so if k is equal to 1 just see out v10 like the uh, sum stored after the operation 1 if k is equal to just uh, see out v11 and you can see after so many uh, like 20 to 30 operations 10 to 30 rounds uh, it will just repeat itself so just uh, just see out the final values of it so that's pretty basically the implementation part and yeah that's basically it so thank you